Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford, and I invite you to a deep exploration of the tools of access consciousness and a totally different way of being. Go with me here for a second. Are feelings creative or are they ultimately destructive? And what is the difference between indulging in all your feelings and consciousness? I am so glad you asked. (laughs) And I have to tell you that this show is being recorded at a time in my life where I have given myself probably the most permission to be in the muck than any other time in my life consciously. And I want to also tell you that I'm so grateful that I did it. So for those of you guys that are new to me, my name is Crystal. I'm an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator. I facilitate more consciousness. And most recently, I stopped facilitating consciousness for myself. So if you've been kind of tracking with me on social and listening to my shows, I did a life update that said, hey, listen, I've been having a hard time. In fact, I, I chatted with a lady this morning who was saying, hey, I can't come to Global Bars Weekend, which, by the way, just happened. What a fucking gift access bars are. If you haven't yet tried it, please get your bars run. She's like, I'm not going to be able to make it. And I, you know, da, 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 all this stuff, all this stuff and things and family and cats and all this stuff. And I said, you know, no worries. I get it. She's like, yeah, and I, and I see you've been going through stuff, too. And it caught me at a moment where I was on the other side of stuff. So it was a little bit like, uh, uh, I said, yeah, and, and and then I didn't really know what to say because I have been very vocal about, hey, I'm, I'm feeling lots of things. I was going through a lot of regret. I was going through a lot of sadness. I've been living a lot of my time in life in hard and heavy energies. And, um, and when... The reason I want to talk about this is because there's there's no shortage of things that are going to pull your attention and, and, and your energy. And because you are so psychic, which I will talk a little bit more about, and you pick up on things from eight to 8,000 miles in every direction, and you have been that way since you came into this planet with a body, um, you have always had in your world the sensation of lots and lots and lots of things and if you haven't yet really kind of worked with the tools of access consciousness and I'm going to tell you two to three of my absolute maybe five of my absolute go-tos for this kind of thing that have been absolutely changing the energy if you haven't been working with yourself all that like that throughout your entire life, like you didn't go to awareness 101 101 when you came out of the womb and nobody told you that you were psychic and you just thought you were crazy. Then if you start playing with the access consciousness tools and you're still that level of aware, a lot of times what you're feeling, which is actually perceiving, and I'm gonna talk more about that, can seem so familiar that you just don't, you just don't question it. And So, you know, like three months ago, I moved to a new country again. I mean, this is my country, but this is a very big country. So every area and every place has its own energies. And I had very high hopes for what that was going to do for me and how I was going to feel and what I was going to just feel empowered to create. And I'm not going to lie, like a month into it, it it changed. It just wasn't, it didn't feel that way. So I was also going through this weird moment where I just, didn't want to work at it anymore. I was like kind of tired of where I quit. I quit on myself. I quit using the tools. I was like, I quit using the tools. And so, so, and so things got harder and harder and harder and harder to where I was like, I, I, maybe I'll just quit everything. Maybe I'll just burn it all down and I'll go sell real estate in the middle of Alabama somewhere, you know, or whatever. And the reason I'm telling you all of this is because your awareness without the acknowledgement of it as awareness will take you down. 
That's how powerful your awareness is. Because your awareness shows up as things you call feelings. And because so many times those sensations in your world that you would call feelings are so similar to things you've felt your whole life, they will seem real to you. And by real, I mean something that needs to be fixed. Now, we talk, I've talked a lot about how feelings are the lower harmonic. You've got your thinking, feeling, emotion, sex and no sex, lower harmonic thing going on. And that's what we would call this reality. That is literally where most of the world functions from, is thinking and feeling and emotions and receiving but no receiving, sex and no sex. And so because most of the world functions there, it's very, very, very easy to one, pick up on it, and two, think it's yours because you are a spherically aware being. And so in that sphere of awareness, which is eight to 8,000 miles in every direction, that's a pretty big sphere, You have, there's a lot of shit going on. War, destruction, points to view about all that war and destruction. Um, you know, drugs, fighting, anger, rage, fury, hate, blame, shame, regret, and guilt, sadness, pain, depression, loss, anxiety. You've got economies and wars and governments. And I mean, I can't even get to the whole list. And so as a super aware spherical being, if you do not ask those sensations in your world a question and you assume because it feels familiar that it must be yours, then you are going to suffer. And I don't know if I've ever gotten that as clearly as I do. So I, about five days ago, made a big, big demand of myself. And I'm like, I am, and I don't know what tipped it. Something tipped it. I wish I could tell you what tipped it. Something tipped. I was like, oh, I had a conversation. I had a conversation with an incredible CF friend of mine, Melanie Clampett. And she was just asking me how I was. And I told her I'm in it. I'm in it right now and I'm, I'm doing this thing where I'm just having allowance for exactly where I am, exactly the way that I am. I'm not asking myself to change. I'm not having anybody ask me any questions. And she's so great. She's just like, I get it. I get it. And I'm like, yeah. And I, I said, I don't really hear anybody talking about that much. And she's like, what are you talking about? Everybody's talking about it. Being in your feelings, letting yourself be where you are, giving yourself space, not bypassing you know, going through the feelings. And, and I was like, oh yeah, everybody is talking about that, but not access consciousness isn't talking about that. And then it sort of struck me for the first time, and I've been doing this 10 years, so you get it when you get it. It sort of struck me the difference between the rest of the world and consciousness. And I, it popped a question into my world that nobody asked out loud. And it was, well, what is the difference between the rest of the world and consciousness? And instantaneously, like all these pieces started falling into place. I was like, oh. And she used a word when she was talking with me because she was describing like a time when she had done something similar. And she's so great at just sliding in the facilitation with personal examples. Not, I don't know anybody else who does that. And, you know, she was like, I get where you're at and I've done it. And she's like, what I discovered is that going through the process in that way is just not as fast and 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 on top of that it doesn't even really work because you go through all the feelings and then for a moment you feel better it's like cathartic and you feel better it's like having a good cry and all that stuff and then you have to go through it again and then go through it again and then go through it again and sure enough I could look back on the last three years of my life and probably the you know the 18 before that before access consciousness and I could confirm that she was indeed correct. It never did really end. It was a pattern that would keep repeating itself because inevitably there would be another stimulus, another trigger. You'd still have those same feelings. You'd still need to talk about it. You'd then have to like organize your lives around triggers because they're there. What are you going to do about them? You now have to avoid this and not do that and not be around this. And that's exactly where Andres and I were getting. We were like starting to form our lives around triggers. And which was starting to be more and more like 
annoying to me. I'm like, I, this is this is making my life smaller. I'm I'm feeling worse. Like, no, there's nothing about this that's ease, joy, and glory. Nothing, nothing. I I don't know what I needed this experiment for, but I'm just I'm discovering things. It's not that nice. And so as she was talking and I, I was opening up my world in a different way, I started, what is the difference then between like going through all the feelings and consciousness? And that's when it really hit me. She's like in all the feelings, she used this word, it's what we're making significant. Now, I think in a, in a normal day that would have offended, I would have gone to offense about that. I would have been like, I'm not making anything significant. I would have made it, I would have made the significance significant. But there was space there. Oh, I'm going to sneeze so bad. <coughs> Excuse me. And that word, it's what we make significant, started opening things up for me in a way that I've never had access to before. I could look at everything that I was doing and see how significant I was making it. And for the most part, I was making pa the past very significant what I thought I should have chosen in the past, the fact that all my money was in the past, you know, like I was, I had a lot of significance around what I had chosen in the past and where I was now based on the past. And so we finished up our conversation and I got off and I was like, I don't think I want to keep doing this feeling thing. I don't think I want to keep doing this. So I woke up that next morning and or somewhere in the next 24 hours, I sat down with my finances and, and I kind of did a video about this, but I'll tell you again, I sat down with my finances and I, and I did the clarity exercise. And you guys have heard about this. You wanna have money in your life, sit down and get clear on what it takes for you to live. So I did it. And then I got to the end of the, the number that you get and I was pretty meh. I was like, mm, don't care. <laughs> And it, that's when it hit me again. I was like, well, then what would these numbers be if you were truly living? Where would you be living and what would that cost? And where would you be and what would that cost? And what, what would that, it was double. It was double. My numbers were double. And I was like, ah, and, and all of a sudden I came alive. I was like, oh my God, that's, there's that energy of life and living. So in that moment, I recorded for myself an energy pull. And it, it contained all of those delicious, living, fun, bubbling energies that I had discovered in my clarity exercise. And I was like, I am, I am going to consciously, consciousness, choose to create and generate something new as my life right fucking now. And so I put that thing on my phone, I got, and I put it in the calendar, and I got up, and I, ever since then, I every single morning, I have been doing that energy pull and generating a new possibility and reality in my world. Now, so that's tool, that's a tool, that's a tool. The energy pull is a tool. The clarity, financial clarity exercise is a tool. So really getting clear on your numbers, getting clear on your living numbers, forming your energy pool or going to energypools.com and grabbing one because they're awesome. And then the, the probably the fourth pivotal key thing that I've had to do over the last four or five days, because I had just come through a pretty strong period where I kind of dropped the tools and was like, fuck it. <laughs> fuck you guys. You're never mind. I'm just going to be broken over here for a while it's because Fuck you guys. So no good reason, just broken. The fourth thing I've really had to do is continue to be aggressive with the choice for my reality. Now I have a lot I have had a lot of you ask me over the years, how do I keep my reality? And my response is you can't. You can't keep it but you can continually choose it. So yesterday, so, you know, I mean, this is a process, right? We've got, do you have people in your lives? Like we've got people in our lives that care about us. We've got people in our lives that have other shit going on. We got, there's stuff going on in the world. We're on social media. We've got kids, we've got stuff, we've got businesses, right? There's stuff. So, so life is not static. Life is constantly moving. So there's a need for tools that move with you so that you can move through and create your life, right? So 
for a minute I felt really good I had access to my reality when you have access to your reality you do fucking feel good but guess what's very easy for you to give up your reality and usually we give it up in favor of other people's realities and points of view well one of the persons who it's really easy for me to give my reality up for is Andres he's close to me we're in a relationship he's the primary he's my primary person and this is not him being wrong this is just a conversation about I have what works for me as a reality and he's got what works for him and when we try to force the other one into our reality we always have problems I wonder why that is and it's not an intentional thing it's just the thing you learn to do so you know yesterday he had a moment he's he's a person he had a moment and I reacted initially and then took myself away and I realized that this was one of those moments that I have been allowing to change entire spectrums of days which then has led to multiple days which then has led to multiple and I was so I took myself on a walk and I'm like no fucking way am I living here so then I had to actively use all the tools and I picked three right off the top all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. I literally said it, I think, 50 times. Say it as many times as you need to. The next one was everything's the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be. Everything's the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be. Everything's ad infinitum. And the other thing I did was like, who does this belong to? Me or someone else? Someone else. So my target yesterday morning was to, to use enough tools on repeat until I was out of my head. Because because what has been happening is I will go into what somebody else says is real and true and find out whether or not they're right. And this is the thing I think, I think this is the thing we do that is the thing that fucks ourselves over. We go into what it is that we are actually just aware of to find out why it's there, what's wrong with us that it's there, and where it's right instead of going, okay, cool, that's interesting, and like moving on. And those two little sentences, okay, that's cool, and then moving on, is the biggest muscle building thing ever in life required for you to continue to choose your reality. And where that gets really challenging is when it's somebody you care about and they're imposing their point of view into their world where they need you to validate their reality based on just what they think they need and your belief that you have to validate their reality because you care and because they need you to. And of course, we all know that if anybody needs anything from you, you of necessity have to be there for them because if you're not there for them, you don't care. Hello, fifth element, the need to be a savior. And so instantaneously, you've given up your reality, gone into to their reality to find out where they are, must be right. If it's coming up for them, they must be right about it. So, so awareness gets misidentified and misapplied as feelings and problems that are then so distracting that we don't even get to the, to the point, which is like, what are you aware of? We're like, I don't know. I just feel so fucked up. I'm so fucked up. I'm so sad. I'm mad. I'm in regret. I can't believe me. And then on top of all that, we've created all this proof of our wrongness in our lives, mostly money and and bad choices, right? Money and bad choices. Those are pretty much our dominant and maybe, yeah, where we can go see, see this shitty thing. And, and then, of course, we're not even looking at like the magic and the miracles and the mysteries and the possibilities we've created because why would you look at those those are first of all there's not that many of them if any which is also not ever true second of all they don't feel like anything these guys make me feel like i'm alive this is angst this makes me feel like i'm alive this is the proof that i'm wrong which is the proof that i'm alive and if i'm if there's something right about me that doesn't have enough substantiative 
sensation to it to even talk about. Whereas if I have all this angst and all these feelings, at least I have something to talk about. I've got something to connect about with other people. If I'm just what's right about me and I'm just space and magic and miracles, mysteries and possibilities, what am I going to talk to anybody about? Well, pretty much nothing. I'm just going to be me and just bounce around the world and like create this if by magic. And, and you do lose your connection with this reality. That's true. But what you gain is you. So how many feelings are you using to maintain your connection with this reality are you choosing? And here's a clearing for you. Everything that is times a godzillion will you destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, fuck, all nine shorts, boys, povets, and beyonds. So, so the episode is like, okay, I tried feelings full on for three, three, two months. Here's my, here's my take. No gatekeeping. Ow. No. Why? Never mind why. No. And what that means is that before things ever get to where my reality is absolutely so far in the back rear view mirror that I can't even find it, I'm getting aggressive with the tools that change my space, change the energy, change the energy. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Awesome tool. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. As many times as you need to. Awesome tool. My computer is awesome. Uh, everything's the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be. Everything's the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be. Everything's the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be. Ad infinitum until it changes the energy. Who does this belong to? Is it me or someone else's? Who does this belong to? Is it me or someone else's? Ad infinitum until the energy changes. Go for a run, go for a walk, go for a dance until you are out of your head. If you are in your head, you are not being. You are entertaining what's in your head as if you could get somewhere with it. It's a trap. It's a trap. And so my no geek, my no gatekeeping on, okay, I did this. Here's what I found. It's like, it's a trap. It's a trap. Don't do it. It's a trap. You just die. You die. Your money dies. Your life dies. Your business dies. Everything dies in the land of feelings. You don't thrive there. There's no thrival there. You feel better for a minute, but then you're actually ultimately trapped and you can't be you. You are space, you are possibility, you are potency. You have all this awareness and it shows up in your world at bad, bad timing. It's all kinds of bad timing for awareness. It's like never the right time. It's always the wrong time. It's like when you wish you could have the sensation of 82 aspen trees and instead you get the sensation of an atom bomb i get it however you are an aware being and you did choose to come to this planet and have a body at this time so now what are you going to do are you going to give yourself access to more consciousness because consciousness feels better Consciousness actually gives you the space to be and to know. And here was the last thing that I did that really, really contributed. So yesterday when I'm in my new phase of like, no, we're creating. And by the way, you're invited to a free call called Let's Create. Because I'm like, I don't think I'm the only one that's been in the goo of everything. Just gooing around like let's create so there's a link around here somewhere up or down where you can come and then invite two of your friends if you want a really cool pdf thing i created um the last thing i did was and and you guys have to understand that i've been so aggressively not using the tools that i had to be of equal aggression with the tools and i know i taught used to, i used to talk about aggression a lot and then i dropped it but it's back and 
so I aggressively, as I'm walking around the apartment, right, I'm changing the energy, I'm getting things moving, I'm like, this is changing now. And, and, and so the last thing I did that worked so well is, what do I know about this? Now we have got to start to get that there's a difference between perceiving and knowing. You perceive all kinds of things, all kinds of things, all kinds of things, good, bad, and ugly. You perceive it all. What you know and what you perceive are not the same things. So what do I know about this? Now, I could give you a little more details, but you know, like my person was having a minute and was like, oh my God, like, you know, rock and rolling inside of his being. And I went into his rock and roll to go see, is this true? Is this real? Do I need to be, do I need to change my ways? Do I need to do something different? And, th and so then I got into his rock and roll. So now we're both rocking and rolling and that's what I left the house to go change the energy on. I'm like, I can't, I can't. No. I am something here that is different than this. What do I know? Now, when you tap into what you know, your eyes will always go down. You will always get present and you will be still and know. You will know. So I went through the things that I know about me. I know this about me. I know that I always show up. I know that this is gonna change. I know that this is temporary. I know that I'm on my, I know that I have already chosen something different. Cause I, because that, the rock and roll of doubt and fear, you jump into that and you are lost. But you jump with equal measure into knowing you are found instantaneously because the truth is could an infinite being ever really be lost no so you can in a second find yourself again but finding yourself is knowing and that completely changed the rest of my day that changed my choices that changed our conversation that we had later in the evening it was such a generative conversation because I wasn't mad I wasn't reactive anymore I was just like this and he's like yeah and so we were able to be an even greater gift for each other. I jumped on and did started doing a 30 by 30 in the group. Like other people got to benefit. Like he jumped on this morning and jumped in with me. So now he's going to benefit. I mean, literally the choice for consciousness fruited. The choice for feelings destroyed. So that's what I discovered. I would encourage you to go after what's gonna work for you. Always, always, always. Remember, what's light for you is what's true for you. What's heavy for you is not true for you. Although what's heavy for you can be fun sometimes to go play around and muck around and find out how it works, see if you like it, see how it works for you. I get that. And always, if you can, remember that if it's not light and it's like mucking you down like molasses in a tar swamp, that ain't what's true for you. So what consciousness can you add? What tools can you use that would add more consciousness? And I'm hopeful that you took some notes on this, wrote down the ones I mentioned. You can go to energypulls.com. You can go to infinitebeingschool.com and that's gonna give you a back to basics course with my favorite energy changing tools. You can go to my YouTube channel. You can go to Dr. Dane Here's YouTube channel. Um, and if you want to come on this free call that I've got going right after this show today, please register, invite your crazy friends so they can come with you. What else is possible for you that you've never considered? What consciousness can you add to your life that you've never considered? What gift are you that you've never considered? And what would it take to be willing to live and be it? Share this with a friend who needs it, and I'll see you next week.